everyone. Welcome back to theCUBE's day one coverage of CrowdStrike Falcon 23 live from Caesars Palace in Las Vegas. Lisa Martin and Dave Vellante here. We've had a great morning so far talking with execs and some customers. We have another customer that we're really going to unpack their case study next. PK is here from Navon, Global Head of Security and Trust CSO. PK, great to have you. Thanks so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Give the audience an overview of, of Navon. I know this is formerly Trip Actions, but give us an overview of the company and the type of business that you do. Yep, yep. So Navon is an all-in-all -all travel and expense management uh, mobile-first SaaS platform. Uh, our core mission is to simplify uh, travel and expensing for our you know, customers and users. Um, we have thousands of customers, uh, close to 3,000 employees. Uh, it's a you know, global operation. So. Talk about, was the company founded back in 2015? Yes, yes. What were some of the gaps in the market at the time? I, I've used Trip to Actions myself, yeah, formerly yeah, Trip yeah, Actions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So know our, that, so what were some of the gaps that you guys, that the founders saw and said, we can yeah. fix this? Yeah, so our uh, founders, uh, Ariel Cohen and Ilan Twig, uh, were frequent travelers and uh, uh, the antiquated nature of you know, the travel tech uh, kind of industry and the products that they were using actually caused a lot of frustration for, to them to actually come out and uh, uh, you know, build a company to solve this problem and modernize travel technology with a mobile friendly, uh, you know, simplified travel experience to the user. That's, that's the genesis of uh, uh, why the company was formed, yeah. So what's changed in your business in the last few years? Obviously the world has changed, the world has traveled, the world of travel has changed, consumer habits have changed. We come out to Las Vegas a lot and you can see yeah. everybody's so eager to get out and, and, and travel. What has changed in your business in terms of its drivers and how has that changed the way you approach security? Yes, so, uh, so Navan, the focus has always been on the user. Uh, that's why the company was formed, we focus on the user. We want to simplify the experience for the user. So it was initially started as a travel tech platform uh, and then we went out and built a payments platform uh, to you know, kind of offer a single pane of glass to our customers with travel and payments. And uh, lately we've uh, been early adopters of the uh, generative AI technology uh, and I can talk more about that. Uh, so all of this has resulted in its unique set of security challenges, right? We have a lot of customer PII, financial information, we are using Gen AI in product workflows, engineers are using it. So it's created a unique set of security risks and challenges that we had to address uh, as a security function. What were some of those major challenges that you had from a security perspective that led you to start looking for technologies like CrowdStrike? Sure, yeah. So uh, if you look at uh, all the common breaches uh, in the recent past, right, it's mostly happening from a business email compromise, MFA bypass, endpoint related, uh, you know, kind of vulnerabilities that uh, lead to these kind of attacks, right? And as a security function and a security organization, our primary, one of our primary objective is to make a cost of an attack as expensive as possible. It's a risk management function. We want to constantly reduce the risk, right? So from that perspective, we were looking at how to mitigate some of these risk vectors on the endpoint, and we were looking at best in class, uh, class technologies there. Uh, so that's why we, you know, kind of uh, initially onboarded the, uh, you know, Falcon EDR platform. And then we expanded the relationship to Falcon Complete, which is the managed services platform as well, because the tech and the service was so good, and we want to make our internal operations as efficient as possible. So that, that was kind of what led to this, yeah. You, you mentioned you're using generative AI. How so, and when did you start? What does that journey look like? And then I want to ask you about what you saw on stage today. Yeah, yeah great question. So uh, we were actually the first travel and expense management company to adopt this technology. Uh, earlier on, beginning of this year, we released a virtual assistant called Ava Chatbot to support our customers using in uh, generative AI technology. Uh, and then we also have an admin offering as part of our product where we uh, you know, kind of use some of these technologies uh, to offer like a, uh, like a personalized data assistant to CFOs and admins. And then in addition to that, our developers also use this technology to uh, you know, write, build, test, and fix code as well. So there are multiple use cases from uh, customer product workflows, internal developer workflows, and also some of our internal operations. But, yeah. So, I mean, you said early this year, so <clears throat> not long after ChatGPT was announced, of course, gener generative AI was around before that. Yes. So you, I, I'm inferring you were working on it before, Last November, or is that true, or, no, was so, uh, it, or was last November the catalyst? Uh, great question. So, Navan has always leveraged AI technology, right? 
But the adoption of this technology because of the open AI and the wave that has happened yes. has really changed. I mean, you can see it here at uh, CrowdStrike and you can see it on many other platforms, right? So uh, that is the piece that I was referring to. We were always an AI first technology, but the adoption of some of these generative AI technologies in our product workflows and for our developers, how we write code for our technical workflows, internal operations, we were embraced and adopted this technology in a huge way. Because we know this is going to disrupt the market. Right. Yeah, well, yeah. What was your talk about today? So today my talk was about SOC transformation, modernizing your security operations center and incident response. Yeah. Talk a little bit about that. As organizations really struggle, some that don't even have SOCs, what does a modern SOC look like today, especially with the threat landscape being so amorphous, the perimeter being yep. so porous? Great question. So if you look at um, legacy SOC, right? Let's take a step back. If you look at legacy SOC, cost of operation is significantly high, right? There's uh, logs that are getting ingested from your endpoint, from your cloud, from your application and then the storage of these logs in a way where it can be indexed real time and write detections on top of that. You need to hire good detection engineers. And then on top of that, to build automation and hire the right skill sets to actually triage these security threats and respond in a timely manner. This entire operation uh, used to be very expensive. So we've really modernized this approach uh, where uh, we, uh, we use a data warehousing platform with log enrichment to actually pull in the right signals and then uh, since once you have the right logs, then it's easy to build detections on top of that using detection engineering, and then you can you know, figure out a strategy. Like uh, That's where Falcon Complete fits right in, where when it comes to endpoint alerts, right, they do the first level of triage for us, right, so that we don't have to look at, we only look at critical high-risk alerts that matter and triage, and our, our analyst time goes into those kind of activities, right? So it's mostly efficiencies and, uh, uh, you know, scale that we want to achieve, yeah. So you use a cloud data warehouse. Yes. Can you share what you use? Yes, yes, absolutely. I'm, uh, uh, we're public about it. We use Snowflake for our log aggregation. Okay. We use Snowflake for our log aggregation and we run a detection engineering platform on top of that. In addition to that, we also have uh, in-house detection engineers who you know, further build on top of, you know, like uh, out-of-the-box detections that we get through MITRE and all of that, and then we stitch all this together with a no-code automation play. Yeah. Okay, so, I, and I know Snowflake has the, the security use case, yes. has a workload. I introduced it, I don't know, a while ago. So when you see something like Charlotte AI, as a practitioner, what do you think about that? What are the concerns that you would have in terms of adopting that? How will you go through determining whether or not that's a good fit? And then how does it fit with, for instance, what Snowflake's doing with NVIDIA or other AI? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So Snowflake's use case, at least in our context and environment, is pri primarily for log aggregation, indexing, and all of those things, mm -hmm. right? Uh, as I said, we okay. have our own other ways of writing detections on top of that. Uh, and then responding, right? Based on once you write detections, you get alerts, right signals, you got to respond to that. Uh, when I think about, like when I heard George today in the keynote and when I'm thinking about Charlotte AI, I, the first thing that comes to my mind is reducing triage time for my you know, SOC analysts and all of that. Uh, if we can achieve that, because as our company is growing, our customer base is growing, our infrastructure is growing, the size of logs and the kind of detections that we need to write is getting complex and complex. So if, uh, this technology can help in triaging you know, you know, some of this in an efficient manner and if we can maybe reduce the cycles for triaging by like 50% or something like that, that's what comes first to my mind. Uh, in terms of adopting the technology, uh, I mean, if your question is broadly around generative AI and open AI, I have a different answer to that, but when it comes to CrowdStrike technology, uh, we are, we've already embraced their platform, right? A lot, lot of our logs are already getting processed in their platform, so I don't see any net new additional risk. You, so you don't have concerns about applying Gen AI, which gives you a different answer every time. Uh, you know, it's, it, it, it sometimes hallucinates, right? That's chat GPT, I'm not saying CrowdStrike. Yeah. I'm not saying Charlotte hallucinates, but do you have concerns about that? And how would you test those and, and try to mitigate that risk? Yeah, so there's always a human angle involved here, right? So we are just using this technology when it, in the, when it comes to security use cases like SOC and IR. Uh, it's just the first level of triage, right, to reduce some of these workflows. And even that first level of triage, we want to validate it from the source, right? Is it, you know, alerting on the right signals, right? What, whatever is coming out of that technology, is it the right thing? And there's, it's always validated by humans. I think it's almost like, think about it this way, uh, when we adopt something like this, you also have to have a rigor and audit the whole thing, right, from a completeness and accuracy perspective. So we look at it from that perspective. So, okay. of course, so there's that. 
And then we also follow the NIST cybersecurity framework to look at all of other you know, threat vectors and risks that we need to mitigate from an AI perspective. We also look at that as well. So yeah. AI will give you the first pass. Yes. A human will validate that. Yes. Just like we use ChatGPT. I mean, yes. I don't think I've ever yes. used whatever ChatGPT gives me. I'm always editing or changing or maybe getting an idea and then applying it. And so it's sort of similar here. Do you see the day when the AI will actually take action for you, or maybe it does in certain cases. Today I'll write a report, but do, yeah. you, do you ever see a day where it's unsupervised? So, uh, from a security practitioner's mindset, yeah. right, uh, I don't see that day yet, I'll be very honest with you, because uh, security is, is a very complex uh, ecosystem, as you know, it's not just a technical profession, there are regulatory angles, there's a customer angle, now SEC has its own you know, requirements for cyber reporting, all of those things, so uh, the stakes are really, really high, right? So um, I don't see that yet, we'll see. Next year, if you're having this conversation, let's see how much the technology has progressed. For now, I still want to rely on my my team, yeah. <laughs> Share with us some of the reasons that Navon chose CrowdStrike in a crowded uh, market. What were some of the things that really stood out to you is that this is yeah. the right technology. And was there any sort of catalyst event within Navon from a security perspective that really led you to realize some yeah. of the changes that you needed to make? Yeah, so we were looking at, uh, as I mentioned earlier, like we are in this, uh, uh, mode of constant risk reduction and making a cost of an attack as expensive as possible, right? So we are constantly looking to move the needle from an endpoint perspective, from a cloud perspective, from an application security perspective, what we do around humans, training, training the developers. So since endpoint was such a common attack vector, we were looking at how to enhance our security posture there. And we looked at the players in the market, and I have to say the CrowdStrike EDR product is easily, you know, it, it, it tops uh, everybody there, right? I mean, that's what, that was the first product that they released, and it, and, and uh, I mean, now I'm, I've, I've gotten a little bit of a behind the scene view because I'm in the customer advisory board, and uh, I know how they ship, how much rigor it goes into uh, when they ship something. Uh, they also test it in their own environments when they ship something, so all of those things. Uh, so yeah, that was uh, why we adopted that and then we expanded the relationship to like Falcon Complete and now I'm looking at their cloud offerings and so on and so forth. Yeah. Do you use Microsoft security products? No, we do not. You don't? No, we you do don't not. Use, yeah. You don't yeah. use any? Yeah. Okay, I mean I know there's, there's a lot of competition there and there's yeah. a lot of overlap there, but, but you know. Yeah. Um, what's the structure of your security regime? How are you organized? Yeah. Who do you report to? You know, people are always asking what's the right security regime. There is no right answer, but yeah. curious as to how, how your reporting structure works. Great question. So, uh, let me take a step back. The primary objective and mission for my organization is three things, right? Uh, we are a product company, so securing our product, building customer trust, having the ability to detect and respond to security threats and uh, incidents in a timely manner because there are regulatory commitments, customer commitments, investor commitments, all of those things. And uh, lastly, uh, you know, reduce risk, right? Reduce risk so that we can support the business. So based on this, my security organization has three main pillars, product and platform security, which is led by a senior leader. All of the leaders are director level. Then there is a SecOps detection and response function. And lastly, the governance, risk, and compliance, and the GRC function, which takes care of like, all the compliance, third-party risk, and policies, and, and customer-facing security con content. That's how we are organized. And uh, I report to EVP of engineering, who uh, this is a person who runs all of our engineering uh, parts of our product, and also many other things, IT operations, a very, very senior exec, and then I have uh, reporting obligations to the audit committee of the board, and also kind of like a dotted line to GC and CFO, because as, you, as, you, as I mentioned, there are multiple implications here in the security. As a technology, so many, if not most CISOs will tell us their number one challenge is lack of talent, lack of depth, lack of bench strength, I'm sure you hear it all the time. Do you have that same challenge, or is it because you're a technology company, you don't face that challenge? No, that's a, always a challenge, yeah. That's always a challenge, but uh, uh, the way I think about security and the way I've built the organization here at Navan is uh, it's a, it's a mission-driven profession. I mean, we are not in a nine-to-five kind of a job, right? It's mission-driven. I mean, you need people who are passionate and think this way. I'm very fortunate that I've found some folks who you know, think like this, and uh, it's, it's a mission for us, right? Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a constant mission, and we are always brainstorming, thinking how to move the needle forward, reduce the risk, and all of that stuff, right? When you build that culture, it kind of trickles down. 
and it's sometimes it's word of mouth. You know, the industry is small, and you know, it, it kind of spreads, and it becomes easier to attract talent. But if you just follow the traditional run book, it's extremely challenging because professionals are good ones, are very, very sought out. Yeah. Do you see AI as helping to, you know, in a good way, move the needle on the skills gap? Uh, of course, yeah, of course. So I think uh, the time, a simple example is, uh, if we think about the education industry, right? Or think about up-leveling some folks, right? The time to digest information, you can just get a summary of like a 20-page document, key takeaways, things like that, right? So of course it's easier to upskill and uh, it's definitely moving the needle here, yeah, yeah. Last question for you, PK, in the last 30 seconds or so that we have. What are some of the main outcomes, business outcomes, that Navon is achieving with the CrowdStrike partnership? Yes, so uh, there are, uh, the primary one is this fits right into our SecOps detection and response play, where uh, the, the, one of the key missions that I mentioned was around the ability to detect and respond in a timely manner, which is very critical with all the regulations that are coming in the security world. So that is absolutely critical, right? Uh, with the Falcon platform and Falcon Complete on top of that, uh, we are at least on the endpoint side, we have really good coverage. Uh, and then in addition to that, also risk reduction, significant risk reduction uh, in terms of how we manage our uh, endpoint security, yeah. Risk reduction is what it's all about. PK, thank you so much for joining Dave and me on the program, talking to the audience about Navon, what it is that you guys are doing, how you're really strengthening your security posture and how CrowdStrike is the key component of that. We really appreciate your time. Of course, thanks for having me. It was thank a you. pleasure. Well, Our you. pleasure yeah. as well. For PK and Dave Vellante, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE Live, day one of our two days of coverage of CrowdStrike Falcon 23. Stick around, Dave and I will be joined by our next guest in just a minute.